Lord is from the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the each of ages, amen. Today is the third Sunday of the third month of the, in the Coptic calendar, and as we have been saying, this month focuses basically on the seeds and the fruit um, <clears throat> of our spiritual life. Um, and we read from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 14, in which the Lord talks about becoming uh, his disciple. <clears throat> and I'm sure all of us have the ultimate goal, God willing, of hearing the joyful voice welcoming us into paradise to inherit the kingdom of God. Um, and a lot of us have certain goals in this life. Um, for example, like to be a CEO of your own company or to be a billionaire or whatever it might be. But the question always remains is not what you want, but how are you going to get get there? Or more specifically, what will it cost? <clears throat> so, for example, in order to get a doctorate, you need hours and hours and years and years of study and research and hard work. In order to be an athlete, you need a lot of dedication and years of training. In order to get to heaven, the Lord says what in the gospel of today? He says many things, but for example, I can't hear to carry your cross, very good. What else? Hmm? Yes, to hate a father and mother, brother and sister, and even your own life. And we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but if you put all of these um, action items under one main category, we call it discipleship, right? Because he says, if anyone comes to me uh, and hates his father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple, <clears throat> right? So the Lord is talking about the requirements of discipleship. And sometimes we automatically assume we know what this word means. Um, but I think the question is, well, what does discipleship look like? And the Lord is trying to describe what it looks like. Um, so I kind of broken it down into maybe three main points. The first thing has to do with making the right choices. The second has to do with counting the cost, as the Lord said. And the third thing has to do with um, continual perseverance in heeding the word of God. Um, <clears throat> so the first difficulty that we find in this passage um, is when the Lord uses the word hatred. And I think we've explained it many times uh, before, um, but um, put it in a different way this time. It has to do more or less with emotion and more with your choices or your priorities, right? So here the Lord is saying um, anyone or anything that gets in the way or that is put as a higher priority, or we choose those things over God, should not be, right? We can't be his disciple if we choose other things above God, right? Uh, it's similar to the verse um, mentioned in the Romans, but also um, in, in um, the prophecies, where it, just, where it says that God loved Jacob and hated Esau. Of course, he didn't hate, but here he's saying he chose to bless Jacob and he chose not to bless Esau. Okay, so um, this is what has to do with, well, what am I willing to choose Christ over? Um, <clears throat> and if that's the case, then I can forsake all that I have if, if I'm asked to um, or even willingly. Okay, so it's kind of like saying, well, what takes priority over the other? Um, or like, for example, if you're if you're filing away documents, you have to plan ahead of time, well, how am I going to organize these documents? By color? Uh, by alphabet? Um, what happens if there's a the or an a in, in front? Do I skip it or not? So we know these rules, right? But the thing is, for us in our spiritual life, we also have to place these rules and the, these guidelines so that when we're faced with a challenge between one priority over another, we know already what we're going to do. Um, and it's easier said than done, right? Um, <clears throat> but um, 
we necessarily have to put, as the Lord is saying, God first and our family and our own self and everything else a distant second. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the choice that we have. As it says in the book of Deuteronomy, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. So it's a choice that the true Christian life, the true disciple life of discipleship has to do with making the right choices. Um, and the hardest ones are made when no one is looking or when no one knows, right? Um, and so um, when the spiritual life becomes inconvenient, then we have to already have pre-planned ourselves to say no. For example, and I know this is a hard task, but it's just an example. Like if we say we're going to change the Sunday liturgy to 4 a.m., you guys going to come? The question should be, yeah, of course, whatever, whatever it takes, because this is this is the, the essence of my faith. I, I, I need this to live, right? <clears throat> or if we say, okay, we're going to change the fast uh, from 43 days, actually it's 42 this year, to 53. Are you going to fast? Say, oh, uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> God willing, uh, no. It's whatever whatever the church says we'll do. That 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 um, uh, that mentality uh, has to do with our preconceived planned um, decisions on how we're going to choose. Even if we don't understand, even if we don't agree, um, this is the, the the best way for us to to proceed forth. Of, co I, of course, I'm not talking about blind following, um, <clears throat> but if we don't understand. Then we ask, we study, we pray, we submit. <clears throat> um, and so this is what it means with in the book of Daniel, when um, Daniel and the three holy youth, um, or actually speaking more specifically about Daniel, that he purposed, him, it, purposed it in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's delicacies. Meaning, no matter what food they're going to give me, this is how I'm going to eat. Um, and so he, he made this plan, and because he wouldn't back down on, on this um, commitment toward God, then they spoke to the king and said, can you do something for, for us? This is our plan. And I know you don't agree, I, I know you don't understand, but just test us. Test us for a few days and see what happens. And we know the story. They, they were brighter and stronger, and um, they, the blessing was shown upon them. So the king, oh, fine, continue, continue with what you do. Um, <clears throat> of course, it didn't go that smoothly later on as we know the story, um, but this is the life of, of the Christian. We know that we're going to face difficulties um, in this world because there is a, a general conflict between God and the worldly things. Um, sometimes we're able to um, skirt by without ease, but a lot of times, um, there there becomes the conflict right in our face. And then we have to decide, what am I going to do? Um, <clears throat> so when the Lord says we can't be disciples here unless we carry our cross, he doesn't mean it as a punishment. He means it as a prerequisite. Um, a part of the plan of accepting whatever crosses we're handed has to do with saying, you know, I'll, I'll accept the circumstances as long as I make this goal um uh, Met, for example, like you can't cook a meal unless you turn off the turn on the stove, unless you get used to the fire being right there, right? Um, if if like when they say if you can't stand the heat, you know, get out of the kitchen type of thing. Well, no, I I don't care about the heat. I need food, right? That's my ultimate goal. If I I will persevere amidst the the heat, right? <clears throat> or like someone saying, I want to be an expert swimmer, but I don't like getting wet. Okay, <laughs> you have to make the decision and bite the bullet in order to accomplish your goal, right? So, <clears throat> for example, um, uh, and sometimes just going through the motions doesn't necessarily um, get the goal accomplished. Um, one seminary student once said, you know, some, simply going to church on Sunday doesn't make a disciple out of you any more than sleeping overnight in the garage will make a Chevrolet out of you. Right? So he's basically saying, just because you're in church 24-7 doesn't mean 
that miraculously you're going to be a saint. It's a good thing to come to church, as we know. It's a good. It's but the important thing is is your heart being lifted up to God in prayer. Are you living a repentant life? Are you seeking or searching um, or viewing the sacraments as you should be? So these are the things that are uh, what makes attendance powerful. Um, <clears throat> but just showing up and sitting, yes, there's a blessing in attending, but there has to be our own personal involvement or relationship um, with the Lord. <clears throat> so that's why um, when Christ rebuked Simon Peter for asking the Lord not to go to the cross, what did the Lord say to him? So sometimes we're like, no, I just need my life to be smooth. Um, that, that's, that's not always the case, right? So, so when Christ started speaking about going to the cross, St. Peter was like, no, 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 <laughs> God, God forbid. He's like, no, of course, this is God's will, right? So he told him what? Get behind me, Satan. He didn't necessarily call Simon Peter, Saint Peter said, this is a satanic idea is to avoid the cross, to avoid the suffering, to avoid the sacrifice, to avoid the discipleship, the life of discipleship. <clears throat> And so the question we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it? Is it worth giving up certain things um, when the conflicts arise in order to get the goal of the kingdom of heaven accomplished? And the answer should be a very clear uh, yes. But sometimes it's difficult if um, we're too attached. And, and so the Lord is trying to train us to be detached um, to, to the worldly things, to our desires. Um, <clears throat> and so this is what um, the... the Desert fathers call the renunciation of the will, um, or the, the ta detachment. It, it and um, it starts with ignoring the voice inside of you that keeps pushing you to do the things that you want, or that's easier for you, or that um, pleases you. Um, and uh, Dorotheus of Gaza explains it best when he tries uh, to describe to to the to the monks how this renunciation takes place. <clears throat> so bear with me, I'll just read a little bit. Uh, he says, um, this person takes a little walk and sees something. His thoughts say to him, go over there and investigate. And he says to his thoughts, no, I won't. And he cuts off this desire, right? Again, he finds someone gossiping and his thoughts say to him, go and have a word with them. And he cuts off his desire and does not speak. Um, or again, his thoughts say to him, go and ask the cook what's cooking. And, and he does not go, but cuts off his desire. So, so this personal, like, um, the, the voice that kind of pushes, I, I really want to do this, or I really want to know this, or I really want to, to open the door to this sin. But, but the, the person who is the disciple, you know, sh shuts that voice um, and says no. <clears throat> he says, then he sees something else in his thoughts, say to him, go down and ask who bought it. He doesn't ask. A man denying himself in this way comes little by little to form a habit of it, so that from denying himself in little things, he begins to deny himself in great without the least trouble. So we have to start small. Um, and, and of course, fasting is actually a, a perfect opportunity to do this. Um, <clears throat> well, what's like sometimes we say, well, what's a day? It doesn't matter. Or what is this food? It's okay. But then the voice that says, no, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be strict. I'm going to be obedient. That voice, when it grows, it, when we're faithful in those little things, it helps us to be faithful in the greater things, <clears throat> as the Lord says. And so he says, not desiring to satisfy his own desires, he finds himself always doing what he wants to. So the, the blessing behind it is that we don't feel like we're limiting ourselves to anything because we're doing what we wanted to do. And then he says, for not having your own special fancies, he fancies every single thing that happens to him. Thus, he's found to be without special attachments. And from this state of tranquility, he comes to the state of holy indifference, meaning uh, kind of like what St. Paul said, you know, if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Whether live or die, we're to, we're to the Lord, we're the Lord's. So that person says, it doesn't really matter what happens because I'm with God. Um, and if God is allowing this, and if God is blessing this, then, of course, you don't take this, this attitude in the wrong way, because oh, it doesn't matter if I fast or I don't fast. No, that's, that's not what, what the, the first 
uh, prerequisite is that we have to eliminate our desire and then we let God choose for us. <clears throat> uh, so um, uh, this is the spirit or the heart of the disciple. Um, another theologian once wrote, uh, salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you everything. Um, and so the discipleship here is, is a transformation. It's a change that is not always well received by us or others. Um, but um, these are the daily tests and the daily tribulations and the daily temptations from the devil um, that, in, uh, that remind us of what the cost is that we have to give. But then when we give up these things, we realize it, um, it is the road to joy and the road to peace and the ro road to love, um, not the road to agony. Um, yes, there is pain involved in it, like the road to the cross, but it's a joyful pain <clears throat> because we're with God and God is blessing us in a different way. So we're giving up, you know, sleep or food or our own, you know, fun, but we have a different fun. We, we have a different food. We have a different relationship that is overcoming all the other sacrifices that we make. <clears throat> St. John Chrysostom, who uh, we commemorate tomorrow, God willing, um, he uh, was known for his prolific and his uh, eloquent sermons and homilies, which still ring uh, true today in, in our ears to the grace of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the church has um, dubbed him the, the golden mouth, right? Which that's what, where we get the word Chrysostom. <clears throat> but he spoke out very clearly against the sin in, in, in his society, similar to what John the Baptist did, and even corrected those who were in authority. Um, and he knew very well that it would lead to, to his punish, punishment or banishment. So one time um, <clears throat> uh, he spoke out a, a, against, you know, living a life of, of luxury and pr profanity and immorality. Um, and then the people started to, went to the empress and said, he's talking about you. And, she was, and so of course she did what? She banished him. She ex exiled him. <clears throat> Saint John, no, no problem. <laughs> um, on the same night, there was a great earthquake in the whole city. It almost destroyed the city, and everyone got worried. And the queen's like, "No, no, no, no. okay, come back, right?" So, it, in a, in a sense, of course, this didn't happen again. They they exiled him the second time in a different way, and 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 it stuck. But the idea here is that God is with us no matter what. Um, and so as long as we attempt and have the plan to do the right thing, to do the righteous thing, um, regardless of the consequences. <clears throat> and so this is what, so in, in the gospel here, the Lord gives two clear examples of what it means um, to, to carry this cross or to be the disciple. Anyone know? Shabbat has to do with counting the cost. So the first one had to do with building a tower, and the second one had to do with fighting a, a war, right? So saying, if you're building, you have to know, you have to plan, you have to realize, you know, what are you gonna, how much it's gonna cost, uh, uh, so that you don't stop in the middle. God willing, we don't stop our building project in, in, in the middle. Um, and and go, same thing with going to war. Um, not do you have the right supplies? Do you have enough soldiers? Do you have the ability and, and, and the prowess in order to succeed um, against this enemy? Um, but the interesting thing enough is that um, when we sit down and we actually calculate the costs, um, oftentimes or almost all of the time, we find it, it's not adding up. Um, every which way you look at it, you say, well, I'm going to be in the negative. I can't save myself. I can't do this. I can't do that. So then what do we do? We say, well, there is a part, a portion in the formula here that I forgot to include. And that's the most important, who is God. And so when we put God first and in, into the equation, it always adds up it, more than what we need. Um, <clears throat> and so um, 
Uh, that's what happened with Gideon. That's what happened with the five loaves and the two fish. That's what happened with the woman with the two mites. Um, that, that's why the Lord told his disciples, don't carry two tunics. Don't carry, um, just take one pair of shoes. Um, don't carry knapsack nor sandals, no greet and anyone along the road. Because he wanted them to train themselves to depend on him. <clears throat> and so, um, going back to the example we we're saying of, you know, sometimes it doesn't make sense when we uh, obey what what the scripture says, right? In, in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, the Lord gave, you know, we've spoken of this many times, right? The Lord spoke about what you have to remember this chapter, especially when we deal with people who are not um, uh, in a uh, Orthodox or uh, apostolic church, right? Because they doubt the power of communion, right? So John chapter six, when he talks about the bread of life after um, um, the the multitude of uh, the five loaves and two fish, you know, feeding the multitudes. Um, <clears throat> later on, he comes and speaks to them about himself as being the bread of life. What was the response? He had many disciples at that point, not just the 12 or the 70, but probably thousands, right? What was the response when he said, you have to eat my body and drink my blood um, or else you have no life in you? It wasn't popular. He was popular until that point, probably. Um, and the teachings made a lot of sense until that point. But uh, for example, in verse 60, it says, um, they were saying, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? And many disciples, many of the people who were disciples left. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, so the, the same idea, even if it doesn't make sense, we, we still have to continue. We have to persevere. As um, then the Lord went, uh, turned to his disciples and said, do you want to go also? What was the response? I mean, Peter, usually the one who speaks up. He said, um, Lord, to whom shall we go? We have nowhere else to go. You are, you are it. Um, he said, you have the words of eternal life. Um, also, we have to come and to believe and to know that you are the Christ, um, the son of the living God. <clears throat> so that should be our response. Even if we get to a part in scripture that we don't understand, or we get to a, a commandment or a teaching or a sacrament that we fully don't accept, we still have to accept it. We have to say, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to know and believe that you are Christ, the Son of the living God, so I will submit myself. Right? Um, <clears throat> one last thing. Um, uh, this has to do with, um, or this is just another um, passage from St. John Chrysostom about uh, how we do this with Scripture. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes we put up um, excuses or reasons why we can't fulfill our spiritual obligations in this worldly life. Um, so St. John uh, paraphrases saying, uh, someone who's saying, I can't leave the courthouse, I administer the business of the city, I practice a craft, I have a wife, I'm raising children, I'm in charge of a household, I'm a man of the world, reading scriptures is not for me, but for those who have been set apart, who have settled in the mountains, who keep the way of life, and saying it's for the monks. I don't have time. Um, and so St. John responds to this saying, uh, what are you saying, man? That ending, att that attending to the scriptures is not for you since you are surrounded by a multitude of cares. Rather, it is for you more than them, for they do not need the help of divine scriptures as much as those who are involved in many occupations. Um, <clears throat> and then later on, he says, um, they rest far from the battle, and so they don't receive many wounds, but you stand continuously in the front rank and you receive continual blows. So you need more remedies. Um, your wife provokes you. For example, your son grieves you. Your servant angers you. Your enemy plots against you. Your friend envies you. Your neighbor curses you. Your fellow soldier trips you up. Often a lawsuit threatens you. Poverty troubles you. Loss of your property gives you grief. Prosperity puffs you up. Misfortune depresses you and many causes and compulsions to discouragement and grief, to conceit and desperation surround us on all sides and a multitude of missiles falls from everywhere. Therefore, we have a continuous need for the full armor of the scriptures. 
So the idea here is it's not just an obligation that I have to do to, to read or to pray or to fast. It's I need these things in order to survive, in order to attain my goal. And so th this um, change of understanding ha helps encourage us to go deeper into the spiritual life because th that's where we'll find our solace. That's where we'll find our strength. That's where we find our joy and peace. Um, it's, it's not in um, submitting to all the needs of the daily uh, cares of life. Yes, we will. But with the firm faith and understanding that it is God who arranges all things and is God who I need first and foremost in my life to sustain me, to help me, but more importantly, to lead me to the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord give us um, this grace to truly be his disciple by counting the cost, by um, limiting or uh, ignoring the voices that, that take us away from the life of the true um, uh, disciple and, and to truly prioritize or to make the choice of God and God first and God only. Glory be to him now from the age of Blessed are they.